I'll jump into the next section, which will be about in the computation of the permeability. I will both have a slide on the theory and then a small code example that was again pre-recorded. And then I'll, I'll go into some of the most recent calculations. Starting from the theory, what we're basically solving uh, in our permeability solver is Stokes flow, which is uh, only valid for slow creeping regimes in which regimes basically the uh, permeability is actually is a material property depending on the microstructure. This means that we're only considering regimes where the Reynolds number is, is close to zero. There are two ways that you can approximate uh, and solve this function and compute the permeability basically. One way is uh, you can impose a pressure gradient in, in the three Cartesian directions. And that way uh, you can basically create a, a, a velocity field through your domain. And then once you, you create that, your mean velocity throughout your domain is going to give you the effective permeability for slow creeping regimes. Uh, on the other hand, another approach is basically imposing a body force. And you can see that I'm basically just imposing the, the, the force on the, on the solid. And in this case, uh, this creates also a velocity uh, throughout your domain from which velocity you can back out effective permeability. So the uh, numerical method that we're using is a finite element scheme, which is basically based on a Q1, Q1 discretization. Q1, Q1 means that we're using first order elements in both uh, the, the pressure and the velocity. And that, that means that since we're using a first order element for the velocity, uh, we need to add a pressure stabilization term. So finally, once we basically have this, this numerical method, uh, this is going to give us effective permeability, the homogenized property in the three directions. So in this case, I'm showing the effective tensor on the left is given every single row is going to given is is going to be given by imposing a body force in the three directions so x is going to give us um, <clears throat> one one row of this of this tensor and so without further ado i'll uh, play the video which shows the the brief code example that, that i've prepared and then i'll go into more of the solver verification and validation that we have been running in this tutorial, I'm going to present about one of the latest additions to the Puma software, which is the capability of computing the permeability of workspaces. So I assume that you've already installed Puma and are able to run just the Python uh, project like here in PyCharm. And I've, I've basically just prepared a small code example that I'm going to go through now. So the first step uh, is that I'm going to run is the generation of a domain uh, that is made of artificial fibers. And uh, I'm actually creating two different workspaces. The first one having completely randomly oriented fibers and the second one having a preferential direction, uh, basically oriented along the XY plane. So I'll, I'll run this. And actually something else that I want to mention is that uh, I set up so that um, the runs are repeatable and you can do that by uh, setting the, the random seed in Puma. So the first thing that um, it's gonna output is a plot of the two workspaces. It's basically just a hundred cube domains. And as you can see on the left, the fibers are completely, completely random. And on the right, instead they are um, oriented with the XY plane. So something else I wanted to, to also briefly mention is that Puma basically relies on, on a 3D rendering uh, dependency called PyVista, which I'm currently importing directly here together with NumPy. And this allows us to create more complex plots, such as the ones here, where I'm subplotting two different domains. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to close this figure and uh, the compute permeability function is going to run on these two workspaces. Um, the compute permeability takes a few inputs. The first one is just a workspace. The second one is a cutoff for identifying the solid phase. And in this case, it's from one to the maximum of the workspace, which is um, basically the, the highest ID for the fibers. And then 
in this case I'm, I'm using a solver called min res and using a tolerance of e to the minus 7 so now the solver is going to run and compute the effective permeability for both the workspaces by running simulations in the three Cartesian directions and what it's going to give us is basically a, a velocity and pressure field for the three directions as well as the k effective which is the effective permeability tensor Okay, so convergence has now been reached, and so the, the two effective tensors have been output, as you can see up here and down here, the second one. So something else that I've added is also some plotting for uh, the velocity and pressure fields that are shown in here. So uh, we can go and, and analyze them a little bit. So in this case, um, what something to note is that the we're using periodic boundary conditions so this is why on some of these um, surfaces you, you can see the reflection from the other side and on, on the top instead it's the velocity fields so as you can see for the domain that has preferential fibers it, it is in the z direction so the through thickness direction um, we have a lower permeability and so a, a lower velo mean velocity also as you can see from from the highest uh, of, of these velocities and and if we can go and verify that in the permeability tensor as you can see the diagonal components for the first uh, randomly oriented domain are more or less the same uh, for the three diagonals on the other hand for the second domain we we have a higher uh, permeability in the X and Y diagonal and instead uh, for the Z direction we have a lower one and still it's lower than uh, than the first domain. So one more thing that I wanted to note is that at the end of this Python script I've also added an export VTI function call so, so that I can export basically every single permeability result that I've run so far including the velocity fields, the pressure fields as well as the two domains. So if I now go and, uh, as you can see, it has exported a VTI file inside my downloads, and I can now drag it and drop it inside Paraview. And there it goes, apply, and now I can basically um, show the same results as I did earlier for, for example, the velocity or uh, the pressure, except the, the workspace, etc. This concludes this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so I will complete the part about the permeability by talking about some of the uh, latest verification of the solver and some early validation that we've been running. So the, the first uh, verification is basically taken from, uh, from this paper, which is by the the folks from UFF, again, the university in Brazil, with which uh, I've been collaborating with, and they wrote this very nice paper explaining their implementation from which the current one in PumaPi is based on, on theirs. So something that they used in their paper is an analytical solution for a domain of packed cylinders, like the one shown here. In this case, uh, we're just going to take basically unit cell by cropping this domain, just the, the repeating part of this domain. And so if we run this specific workspace using the compute permeability function, you can obtain velocity and pressure fields that look similar to this, where, as you can see, like I'm just plotting one component of the velocity on the left and then the other component on the right. And the same, uh, since it's like symmetrical, then it's basically going to give us the same answer, uh, but opposite for the Y uh, Cartesian direction and, and similarly for the pressure field that is converged to. This is instead a convergence study that we have uh, run on this specific geometry where we are basically refining the uh, voxel size uh, finer and finer and as, you, as we can see, we, we, can, we are slowly converging to the analytical solution. So the latest part that, uh, is about the validation campaign, and this is very much work in progress. The validation campaign was run on uh, Fiberform, 
And these are three real micro CT samples that we have run permeability for. And they are 500 cubed domains and with voxel size of 2.6 microns. And uh, as you can see, the, um, the porosity varies a little bit. So the, there, is, there might be a little bit of variation in the results due to that. Um, the other feature that we basically run is that it was run on a, on a GPU. And this was run specifically using an implementation that was provided by, by uh, UFF. And uh, it uses a matrix-free approach, which basically it doesn't need to construct uh, the whole sparse A matrix. And this uh, approach lowers the, the memory footprint considerably. And then uh, it's using an iterative solver called PCG, which stands for the preconditioned uh, conjugate gradient. And finally, uh, the experimental values for this specific type of domains are also taken from a a paper by Francesco, which uses a, a slightly different porosity value for the experimental runs. So I'll jump into the, the permeability results. And here I also want to, to reference uh, my colleague at UFF Lopez, who also helped with, with these runs. Uh, this was run on the, on the cluster at NASA uh, using a CUDA kernel. And then uh, these are the basically the three permeabilities that are obtained for the three samples. ABC uh, is referencing the three uh, domains that we had in the first uh, slide. And specifically, we have a um, in-plane and through thickness permeability coming from the, the experimental values, which are the red and purple curves. And as you can see, the three samples uh, for the in-plane on the top and through thickness on the bottom uh, show a pretty interesting trend uh, which somewhat matches the, the experiments. So another thing to notice is that the times for, for these runs is, is really, really low for, um, for the GPU implementation, which is very promising. And in the future, we will work on publishing these results and, and running more validation cases.